you know, a lot of students were influenced by people like Frank Lloyd Wright and great American architects or Louis Kahn and it was a visit to one of their buildings at a formative time in their life that may have set them off in the direction of studying architecture. Any exposure is good to bring, whether you bring architects into the classroom or um, kids who've already shown a pretty strong interest might be able to shadow an architect in their hometown or maybe shadow a student in school. Go visit some good buildings. Go visit some exciting places and, and think about the, the fact that it was actually people who created those buildings. I think we often don't even realize that it's just people like you and I who get to lead the development of these incredible projects. Certainly across Cincinnati, both within the campus and then areas like over the Rhine that has this amazing building stock, and Columbus, uh, Toledo, Akron, there's actually a, a world-renowned building that's been completed recently in Akron, Ohio by a firm called Coop Himmelblau. Their new art museum is, is just an incredibly contemporary and, and unique building, and a visit to a building like that would certainly uh, change someone's perspective on what a building can be. And these are sort of hidden gems all around uh, our state and our region. One of the best and most important ways to make sure that girls feel like architecture or any other field is a choice for them is by not saying that that's a man's job or a man's field, right? So you start there. I think the encouragement by identifying the skills, the talents, and the interests of the student girl, boy, black, brown, white, purple, right? And also not discouraging because of, you know, a bad semester in math or a bad day in art class, because all of this stuff can be learned. Sometimes it's just, you know, putting your mind to it and your attention and your interest. I never got better at school than I did once I found what I love. While I really stress that you have to get that math, you have to get the physics, and of course English and all the other things that you do in high school, I would not ever forgo art. That you equally benefit from a year in direct art training. And I would say specifically drawing. Certainly, uh, I, math was tremendously helpful. I, I went all the way through you know, high school and, and early college calculus while I was in high school. And it's very helpful just to get sort of confident and comfortable with geometry and trig and, and calc, and obviously algebra, to, to get math under your belt so that you're not having to work at that while you're trying to solve architectural problems and, and starting to address physics. Um, and then equally my drawing courses, learning to look at the world around you and to translate what you see to a page. I took a sculpture course that was very helpful for me. All of these um, 2D and 3D representational subjects are incredibly helpful uh, for any burgeoning architect. We're at sort of a transitional time in the education of, of architects in the United States right now. In the past, it was really a, uh, a bachelor of architecture that one needed to become a licensed architect in the U.S. There's very few accredited bachelor of architecture programs that are left. Everyone is transitioning now to uh, an accredited master of architecture program, or an MARC program. There are about a hundred and 40, I believe, accredited programs in architecture across North America. And they will 
you know, advertise right off the bat up front that they are accredited by the National Architectural Accreditation Board. This is essential because there are a lot of programs out there that may have the word architecture in them but are not that accredited degree that you will need to go take the exam, that you will need to call yourself an architect. So in almost every, every school that I mentioned, these accredited programs, enrollment is limited. Only so many students can be accommodated. And then because of that competition and the cycles, et cetera, very often the admission cycle is different and earlier than the admissions, general admissions into the university for a freshman. So you've got to get in there early. You, you're working on your application during the summer rather than over your Christmas vacation in December. So it's really important to check with the school that you're interested in, find out their application process and their application calendar so that you're on time, not only with your own materials, but with all the materials you need to get from your high school, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera.